So, I am just as deaf as I am blind. The problems of deafness are deeper and more complex. What would we do without our hearing? That was difficult, huh? <clears throat> the difficulty that you just had understanding my voice is the stark reality for thousands of children and adults all over the world. Can you imagine waking up and not hearing the birds chirping, the water running, your baby crying, or your husband calling your name? What if you woke up tomorrow and your auditory world was completely disconnected? Hearing loss is not just a problem in children, but also in adults. It is the most common birth defect, affecting 12,000 children each year. It's the third most common chronic health condition in older adults. 30% of those between the ages of 64 and 75 have hearing loss, and the numbers only continue to rise as we get older. With nearly 50% of those greater than 75 having hearing loss. These, these numbers are significant, but they just tell a small portion of the story. A story of the struggles and the difficulties that those living with hearing loss today deal with on a daily basis. So since we just celebrated Martin Luther King Day, I thought we would use an excerpt from his speech. Uh, take a second to read this passage. He gave this 50 years ago. Now listen. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. Gives me chills every time I hear his speech. So I think hopefully you'll agree with me that reading the text conveys the meaning, but even 50 years later, listening to him speak connects us emotionally to his passion. That's why listening to a TED talk hopefully is better than just reading an article. That's why for almost 100 years, radio has been such an effective medium for communication. What's a religious service without the sound of beautiful voices singing in the choir. For thousands of years, many religions have incorporated beautiful music and sounds to establish the emotional connection to their parishioners. Many people don't leave home without their earbuds, listening to something all day long. And most, if not all, drivers make their commute more bearable by listening to their favorite radio station or talk show or even on their cell phone, hopefully with Bluetooth. Try watching television without the sound. Even with closed captioning, you can't really connect with the story. Now with the sound, you can even walk out of the room and still get it. So one thing led to another. <laughs> So what does she do? First she screams, George, what are you doing? My God! <laughs> and it looked like she was going to faint. She started clutching the wall, trying to hang out. To Our hearing is always on, and we can't turn it off. Go ahead, close your eyes, and you won't be able to see the world around you. But our ears are constantly in tune to the noisy world around us. And this is why alarms can alert us of danger or tell us to do something like wake up. This is why mothers play music to their unborn children and why they sing in order to soothe their babies. This is why we can have conversations without even seeing the person, like on the telephone. And this is why family members often talk to their comatose loved ones. Our hearing is always on. So many athletes listen to their favorite tune to get psyched up for a competition. Imagine being able to improve your performance just by listening to something. 
militaries have for centuries incorporated stirring music and inspirational sound uh, speeches and uh, words to ready the troops for battle. So music is one of the most pleasurable and important human experiences. And whether you agree with a recent study that showed that music was equivalent in pleasure to sex and romance and better than eating dessert is debatable, but we know that with hearing loss, music is one of the first things to be degraded and patients complain bitterly about it. Music is so integral to brain function that children with hearing loss develop speech and language better when they are exposed to music. And so many programs throughout the country, including the one at UM at the Debbie School, incorporate musical education and particularly having them play instruments to improve the development of their speech and language. So knowing how our hearing allows us to appreciate music, watch TV, and create enjoyment in our lives, how does the ear do this? How does the ear work? So sound comes in, it travels down the external auditory canal. The sound then hits the eardrum and causes the eardrum to move or vibrate. And the sound then travels into your middle ear, where there's three tiny bones, the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. And the sound causes the bones to move and to vibrate. And the bones are attached to the inner ear, also known as the cochlea. And it's the movement of these bones on the cochlea that causes the fluid inside the inner ear to move. And it's the movement of the fluid that causes a shearing motion on tiny cells inside your inner ear that then releases an electrical signal and that gets sent up to the auditory nerve. And the amazing thing about this is it all happens in a fraction of a second. So once the sound is processed by the ear, it's sent along the hearing nerve to various parts of the brain where noise becomes interpreted as meaningful sound, like speech and language, like happy sounds of a baby laughing, like worrisome sounds of tires screeching. All of these sounds are interpreted in the brain once that information goes up. And our auditory system is amazingly adept at being able to identify sounds, even with very little information. Go ahead, we'll give you a second. Name this sound. Good, mosquito. That's right. Now name the tune. And we're only going to give you a few notes. It's amazing that we can identify these. Twist and shaft, that's right. There are hundreds of things that cause hearing loss, from ear infections, wax, genetics, trauma, medication. The list is endless. But what do we do when someone has a hearing loss? Is there anything we can do? Yeah, there's a lot we can do. In fact, almost every type and degree of hearing loss can be restored with one or a combination of medication, surgery, implants, uh, auditory prostheses, hearing aids, and other treatments. No other sense can be as completely restored as hearing loss can. So with interventions as simple as removing a wax plug from the ear canal to treating ear infections, removing fluid from the middle ear with ear tubes, repairing a hole in the eardrum, taking out tumors from the ear, and even from the hearing nerve and the brain stem, and even reconstructing ears when someone was born without them. 
Technological advances have allowed us to go from instruments like these to the beautifully sophisticated, light, small, great sounding, comfortable hearing instruments like these hearing aids. And all of this has occurred because of collaborations among scientists, physicians, audiologists, researchers, and even patients. We have a variety of auditory implants that we can place in and around the ear and even on the teeth to bypass the disordered part of the ear and get sound to the nerve in the brain. Hearing loss can occur at any time of life, but there are two critical periods. One is just after birth, between the ages of zero and three, and then again in the elderly. Early identification of children with hearing loss is crucial. When children have hearing loss, they struggle to develop speech and language. And language is what children use to connect with their friends, family, classmates, teachers, and then become adults who use language to obtain a job, graduate from high school, develop personal and professional relationships, and achieve their dreams. When children have hearing loss, their journey involves a few more twists and turns in order to learn speech and language. When parents get told that their child has hearing loss, it's not surprising that they're often filled with mixed emotions of confusion, overwhelming, sadness, and oftentimes guilt. Because most parents who have children who have hearing loss actually have normal hearing themselves and have no idea what to do with a child who has hearing loss. The good news is that if we identify children early, we're able to allow these children to develop normal speech and language and be in classroom with their normal hearing peers. However, when children are identified late, after the age three, they typically suffer severe and permanent speech delays. With the implementation of newborn hearing screenings in almost all 50 states, we are able to identify children with hearing loss and screen them within hours of birth. And therefore, we're then able to identify and more importantly, intervene earlier, allowing children with hearing loss to go on to go to school, become educated, and be fully immersed in the hearing world. Let's look at one technology that's really exciting that can take a deaf child, even an adult, but a deaf child who previously would have no access to sound and speech and language and get them into mainstream school if they're implanted on time. The cochlear implant takes auditory information and converts it into electrical signal. And that signal is transmitted through the skin through an electromagnetic coupling and it bypasses the non-functioning cochlea and stimulates the hearing nerve directly to send the sound information to the brain. So here's an example of a family of four siblings, all of whom were born severe, severely hearing impaired or deaf. But for social reasons, they received their cochlear implants at different ages, and we can tell how their speech has developed. Let's listen. The boys were implanted later, about age five to seven. Okay, no, go first. I'll wait in front of the lady. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Jim Barry, Jim Barry, Jim, Jim Barry, Jim Barry. Say it quickly. Jim Barry. They're trying to say Jam Barry, the title of a book. Their sister, a bit younger, was implanted at age four. I feel glad for her, and, and I've been giving her a gift. Oh, did you already pick it out? No. What are you going to get her? I don't know. Maybe the notebook. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. What do you think she'll use the notebook for? So she can write it, and so she can and the youngest sister was implanted at age two. Instead of going to the movie, I love to go to the movie. Why do you love to go to the movies? Because I, I want to eat popcorn and soda. <laughs> and I will, I, will, I will get my candy. So I think you could appreciate the difference in quality of their speech depending on when they were implanted. But the good news is, as you could see how she was, they were interacting 
uh, with the therapist, they can all use the auditory information in order to go to mainstream school and connect with their family and friends uh, and music even. So the implant is helping them no matter what age they received it. Here is another example of an exceptional young man who was identified early and he was given hearing aids. His speech and language was just kind of going on a steady progress. And after he was implanted with two cochlear implants, his speech and language skyrocketed. Here's an example of him uh, testifying in front of the Florida Senate. Student, and I'm 10 years old. I was born deaf. When I was two years old, I attended a deaf school in Miami, which is an auditory oral school that helps children learn to listen with their assisted listening devices in the hearing world. I started wearing hearing aids, and now I have cochlear implants. One is surgically implanted in each of my ears. These are my cochlear implants. I am deaf without them. My hearing is not restored, but I am able... Pretty amazing. So on the other end of the spectrum, when hearing lo loss goes untreated in the elderly, it leads to depression because they're disconnected from their family and friends, from music, from the activities that they used to engage in, like going to restaurants or going to the movies. This depression can lead to frustration and fatigue and even other mental health issues. There is relatively recent but strong research that shows a direct relationship between hearing loss and dementia or cognitive decline in the elderly, as well as hearing loss and shrinkage of the brain or brain atrophy. The mechanism of that is unknown, but it's possible that with interventions as simple as a hearing aid, we can prevent, stop, or even reverse these brain changes. That research is ongoing, so stay tuned. We hope we have showed you how hearing is a unique sense that either connects or disconnects you from the world. Whether it's appreciating music, developing speech and language, or simply hearing the sounds of food cooking in your kitchen. Whether you're two months or 92 years old, the impact of hearing loss is significant. The good news is that there's a lot that we can do in order to help those living with hearing loss to be able to reconnect to their friends, family, and maybe, more importantly, the world around us. So Carrie, I think Helen Keller did say it best. Blindness separates people from things. Well, deafness separates people from people. Thank, Thank you. you.